this wipe, I will try to survive for a whole week in rust, living in the sky. Transforming this 2x1 on the ground into the biggest sky base ever created in rust. With my own farm, shop and so much more. And with this newly added parachute, this would open up a ton of possibilities having the base in the sky and all. Okay, hold up, I know, it's been months since the parachute came out. And believe it or not, but this was actually recorded when the parachute had just come out. Which was in... September, oh my god, that's so long ago. Anyway, don't worry, I had a few problems come up, but don't worry, the next video will not take this long to come out. Anyway, before I started playing, I decided to try out the parachute on my private server. Just to try and get the hang of it, and also to see what would be possible with it. Okay, well, you can't, you can't jump down from there. <laughs> Obviously can't. And the biggest thing this parachute brought to Rust was an easy way on to launch it. But with the parachute being new and all, it was a little bit what glitchy. the hell just killed me? Okay, so apparently the parachutes are a bit glitchy. <laughs> But I tried my best to get this jump down anyway. Yeah, so, okay, I've been, I've been training a bit and it's so inconsistent. You die in the weirdest ways. Now, practicing in-game was fun and all, and I actually felt like I had gotten the hang of this thing. But I could still go further, and I decided to go skydiving in real life. Okay, I think I am ready. As soon as I joined the server, I placed down the 2x1 on top of the tallest mountain on the server. This will later be expanded into the sky base. But in order for this, we need a lot of stone. Okay, I managed to get a Thompson and a jackhammer from outpost on my way over here. So that should make things a little bit easier when it comes to farming. And so, I started farming. Okay. Time to start expanding the space. First thing I needed to do was turn this 2x1 into a 5x5. But that wall was blocking me from building, and so I had to get rid of that first. Well, that took a long time to break. Then, it was just for me to build the 5x5. This would later on just act as our ground floor, but for now, we will live here. Okay, that is the ground floor done. And in order to expand this base any further, we would need a lot more stone, especially for the pillars that would hold up the sky base. And well, I knew as soon as I started building on the base and it became bigger, I would also become a target for other groups on the server. And so, before I started building, I wanted to make sure I had enough resources to finish the entire base in one go. Okay, we have a ton of farming in front of us. This is going to be a grind. Thanks to War Thunder for sponsoring this video and making that earlier stunt possible. War Thunder is the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made. You can play with more than 2000 tanks, planes, helicopters and ships in dynamic combat arms PvP battles. Every vehicle is incredibly detailed and modeled down to their individual components, offering a highly immersive combat experience. The collection of vehicles in War Thunder spans over 100 years of development, from the 1920s to the present day. Pair that with the incredible 4K graphics, authentic sound effects and beautiful music you can imagine immerse yourself in any period over the past 100 years. My favorite aspect of War Thunder is the damage x-ray feature, where you can see exactly where the bullets hit, realistically damaging vehicle components and crew, leading to some satisfying hits. Download War Thunder for free today on PC, PlayStation or Xbox using my link in the description or the pinned comment. If you use my link on PC, there's a large free bonus pack, including multiple premium vehicles, premium account, boosters and much more. Thank you to War Thunder for sponsoring this video. Okay. First farm run is done, but uh, this really isn't even scratching the surface of the amount of stone we're going to need for this base, so let's get to work. With some of the sulfur I had farmed, I bought a level 3 workbench down at bandit camp using the drones. 3000 sulfur for a level 3 workbench, that's us. Deal. Nice. Then I just continued filling up my boxes with stone. And before logging off, I also built some more on the base. Okay, <sighs> time to start building up. We need to go 11 stories up. Okay, so that's going to be the length of the space. Then we're gonna have a two-story base on top of that, which is hopefully going to be pretty cool. Then after a bit more farming and fortifying the base, it was time to log off. Next morning started with me doing some farming. So much stone. 
plan for today was to try and get up the base and also try and get my hands on some weapons. And so after some farming I grabbed a gun and headed out to try and find some people to kill. Ooh, we take that. Oh, that guy's not gonna be happy. So many guns, bro. This is going good. Now we had some guns, and so we were straight back to the stone grind. So much farming. During this, I also had a bit of a scare where I thought I would be MLRS. But luckily, this was not meant for me. Bro, that scared the fucking shit out of me. I don't know why, but I thought that was meant for my base. But no, it was it was just meant for these guys. But I do think it's a good time for me to explain my area for you all. You see, this place is filled with other groups. First, just down the mountain from me, we had this giant base. Then on the same mountain I lived on, we had this Russian group. Down the mountain from that, we had this group that was just starting out. And lastly, over by Launchite, we had the big boy of the server. And all these groups had one thing in common. They would all be a big pain in my ass. But that will of course come later on. Anyway, I now had enough stone for the sky base. And so, it was time to start building. And so I spent the next hour just placing frame after frame. Okay, we're six stories up. We need five more stories, then we can start building on the base. And as I was just talking to some friends in Discord, Heli came by. <laughs> Fuck it. Hey, that's a what? Wait, what? What? what the Did you just take Heli on accident? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what? I might go deeper and fucking take that Heli, bro. What even happened? <laughs> Maybe not the best thing to do when you have an unfinished base. That was fucking sick. <laughs> Yeah, after getting gifted probably the freest heli in Rust history, I dealt with the counters and then it was just back to building. Wow, this is gonna look awesome when it's done. Like, it already looks insane. And after many building blocks placed and upgraded, it was finally done. And after this I did a quick tunnel run to fill up on components and also scrap. I wanted to get the electricity up and running for this base as soon as possible. Because the first thing this base needed was defense from air attacks. Or MLRS, which would basically take out this entire base in one strike. You need three SAM sites in order to be fully protected from MLRS. But for now, one is all I could afford. And with the SAM site on the roof, I also put down a turret to protect it. Anyway, the main part of the base was now done. And all I had to do now was put in 95 thousand stone in the TC every day. <sighs> Whatever, I moved the TC and all my important stuff up to the sky base. And for the TC I created an automatic filling system. This would make it so I didn't have to fill the TC by hand every three hours. And all I really had to do was get the stone, which was still a lot. Anyway, I still needed two more SAM sites. And for that I needed to get my hands on a thousand scrap. And so I began farming. Let's try this out. And as you know, before I'd even started playing this wipe, I learned that you can get up on launch site without a key card using the parachute. Then I just did this run a few times. Bro, using the parachute, it's actually worth again to run launch site because you don't need to use the red card. I also farmed the road some and I also did some gambling. Yes! Oh! Hell yeah. And with this, I had enough scrap for one SAM site. Okay, now we're gonna be kinda safe from even Lares. I mean, one SAM site isn't gonna completely protect you, but it's gonna do some. But before I could set up this SAM site, I heard a raid close by. And I headed over to check it out. What is happening here? What the? Fuck yeah, I need a low grade and gunpowder so this is great. Then back at base I got a visitor from the clan down the mountain from me. Thank you man. This is huge base. Yeah. My giant base had caught their attention and understandably they were very afraid of me roof camping them. Which as long as they behaved I had no plans to do. 
At this point from all my farm runs I had a box of metal ore. And so I created an automatic furnace system. Here's a video if you want to learn how to create this. Okay, we have some electrical furnaces now. Now we just need to put this inside of here and... Yes, that is working. I mean, this is, this is just the start. This is the first project. At the end of all this, I want everything to be powered by electricity. So... Yeah, so the plan was to make the Skype base as efficient as possible using electricity and other stuff. Then I remembered that I had the second SAM site I still needed to set up, and so I set up another electrical system. Just to realize that someone had destroyed my other SAM site. Oh no. Someone has broken my SAM site. This panicked me a bit as I thought I was about to be blown to hell by MLRS, but luckily nothing happened. Which I first thought was pretty weird, but then I remembered that SAM sites are super easy to destroy. I mean, it legit cost 16 fire arrows to destroy one SAM site. Yes, a SAM site that will cost you 500 scrap can be destroyed by a naked with a bow and some fire arrows. Anyway, after this I did some farming filling up the TC subkeep while also PvPing a little bit around the area. Give me that. But I was about to make a vital mistake. Because as I was doing this, I killed a naked that was farming on the mountain. Ooh. This was my first time seeing this name, and so I didn't even give it a second look. But little did I know, this name belonged to the group living right down the hill from me. You know, that same group that I had that talk with earlier in the day. Oh, you there? And well, they were oh. not too happy with me taking this loot from them. Okay, give that shit back or we found him up here. It's up to you, brother. Yes, the good old give us back the loot or we will raid you, Thresh. And I mean, yes, the smart thing to do would probably be just to give them back their loot. I mean, to be honest, this loot meant nothing to me. And if they just asked for it back nicely, I probably would have given it to them. Or actually, that's a lie. I probably would have kept it even then. But after a threat like that, ain't no way I'm backing down. Using the metal my automated furnace had been smelting, I quickly upgraded as much as my base as possible. And now it was just for me to wait for the impending raid. What is happening here? Oh, they are getting screwed over by someone. We might be good. I mean, at least for a while. I mean, they have other things to worry about than one inventory of loot. Right? Yeah, so an unknown group were attacking my neighbors. And they were taking out their SAM sites and turrets. Seeing that they had their hands full, I figured I had enough time to get some sleep before the raid. But that would end up being a bit too much to ask for. Okay. Well, fuck sleep then. Killer Pro Elite? Bro, who is this? Peanut? Gambling. Bro, who are these people? Yes, this wasn't the people I had expected would show up. This was the same guy I had killed at that raid earlier in the day. And they were the group living in that unfinished space down the hill from me. They were trying to break my SAM site and turret on the roof. Oh man. Is this seriously what they're gonna try and do? Well, first we get rid of the ladders, now they can't get up. I tried my best to stop them from breaking my stuff, killing them over and over and over again. But they just kept coming back, and eventually the turret and the SAM site broke. Luckily for me, after this they went away. But I couldn't sleep yet, I had to farm up for another SAM site, and so I spent about an hour farming up enough scrap for a SAM site, and I also placed down two turrets on the roof instead of one. Now, I could finally get some sleep. Oh yeah, I guess I forgot about that other thing from earlier. Come on, stand still for me. No! Oh my god! That did not go as planned. Oh my... 
Oh, thank God. I didn't fuck it up. I thought it, I thought it was gonna fuck it up again. Bro, this base is fucking trash. I quickly learned that the sky base sucks ass in the defense. Bro, am I fighting a fucking ghost? This would be much harder than I first thought. We don't die from that? Oh, this base is gonna fall. I quickly understood that I needed to clear these guys out fast before this base I built started falling. Oh! <laughs> we need to try and seal this shit. Oh, you're mad. I managed to sneak my way onto the roof and I just tried fixing as much as I could. Oh, give me that. Take that. Take that. Bro. Bro, I'm going off. I'm going off. It's so fucked! And it was in the nick of time as MLRS started flying towards my base. Luckily with my SAM site and me managing to sneak in some repairs, the damage to my base weren't at that extreme. Bro, I, I think we're good. Hey Skyman, GG bro, we're out of boom. GG. <laughs> How's it look at? Oh, these are good? I didn't even take damage. Bro, did nothing take damage? Must be the bottom, right? Something must have taken damage. Oh, here it is. Here's the damage. And after a stressful day and night, I could finally get some sleep. Next day started with some farming for upkeep. I ran the tunnels and launch site. After last day's struggles, I knew that some more defenses for this base was needed. And while the actual sky base was now semi-protected, I think it's about time we fortified the ground floor as well. And so the plans for that day were set. I wanted to get up a compound around the base with a few turrets. There's also something I wanted to try, but my neighbor's SAM site were blocking me. And so I quickly got rid of that. There we go. Now, why would I destroy this SAM site? Well, as you can see over there, that is the dome. And uh, well, I want to see if I can parachute to dome from my base. Oh yeah, that's going to be easy. Bro, that is so sick. Yes, I could basically run dome from my base without much of a risk. And so whenever I was going to do something in the direction of dome, I could just do this for some extra loot. And if someone happened to be running dome, they were in for a bit of a surprise. That guy's so confused. That was awesome. I also continued running launch sites since I needed more cameras and computers for turrets. From these launch site runs, I'd also gotten a few airdrops, and so from that, I got a bit of extra loot, but nothing special. Someone had yet again destroyed my SAM site. And so I had to replace that yet again. Okay, bro, SAM sites need fixing. This is not okay. This is my... I don't know how many SAMs I've bought. A lot. This made it clear to me that we needed to get up that compound ASAP, or my SAM sites would just continue being destroyed. I still had two towers that I needed to fit into this compound, and so before I placed down any walls, I mapped out these two towers. But as I was doing this, the Russian group came online and started roof camping me. Really? You wanna roof camp me? Big mistake, buddy. Yeah, not the smartest idea from this group. But if it was a roof camp battle they wanted, that's what they would get. After about 15 minutes of me just killing these guys non-stop, they finally stopped and I could get back to mapping out the towers. Then to get the walls for the compound, I just pumped some stone and traded that stone for wood at outpost. Okay, there should be enough walls. I did like three runs over to outpost. Just farming stone on the way and this should definitely be enough. Boom. And with the compound done, I placed down some turrets, and with that, our base was now a bit more safe. 
So far, the way up to my sky base was with just ladders, and while it was pretty quick, it was a bit too much work for me. And so the plan was to upgrade from ladders to an elevator. Or so I thought. But after about 20 minutes of trying to get this elevator to work, I ran into probably the most stupid restriction on any item in Rust. What the hell is this? Because you can only place an elevator 6 stories up. You have to be kidding me, that's the dumbest shit I've ever heard. They have a limit on elevators? That's so stupid, it's already bad, no one uses it, why would you limit it? There's nothing to gain from it. That's so dumb! Okay, it looks like we're not using an elevator because fucking elevators are fucking... Oh shit. Yeah, I was pretty pissed after realizing this, since an elevator was even more useless than I had first thought. <sighs> even after I'd gotten up the compound, this did not stop people from trying to mess with me. But the compound did make it a lot easier for me to defend from this. Not this again. is back at it again. <laughs> it's not perfect, but I'm gonna have to take that away anyway. Bro, just leave my base alone. After this, I noticed a raid base next to the group that had tried to raid me yesterday. And after checking it out, it looked like the raid wasn't finished yet. And so, I tried going through a few doors. Okay. Armor door. Let's get some more boom. What the... Free full kit? We take that. Oh, I am stupid. That was a sheet metal door. Oh so yeah, I thought this was an armored door and I wasted 3c4 on a normal sheet metal door. <laughs> Listen, okay, I was still very tired at this point and it does kind of look like an armored door with this thing up here. It's an easy mistake to make, okay? But in the end, I wasted a bunch of explosives and got nothing from it. The space would eventually decay and I never saw this group again. As for me, it was time to get some sleep. Next day, I still needed more SAM sites because they kept getting destroyed. And so yet again, I ran the tunnels and launched up. And at this point, I had honestly gotten these runs down to a science. I wanna test something. Can you MLG with the parachute? Like, can you get down from launch site with the parachute? Okay, I mean you take a bit of damage, but that was fucking awesome. We're slowly getting to a state where our base is starting to feel a little bit more secure. And after that I took a break for a little bit, and when I came back, some people were inside my base. Okay, here we go again. I managed to deal with the raiders rather quickly, and luckily they didn't make it very far. Who the hell are these guys? I just took a break for a little bit, then I come back and fucking Joe is inside my base. What the hell? Someone's up here too. Oh, same, same guy. Three minute. Take that. I continued just trying to be as productive as possible, running dome and upgrading the base. Is that someone farming wood? Not on my watch. Parachutes are so slow. Okay, that was so much less epic than I thought. Parachutes are so slow. At this point, we were a few days into this vibe, and I'd farmed a shit ton of stone for upkeep and building during this time. And while I farmed stone, I had also picked up a few sulfur nodes here and there. And so, at this point, I had quite a bit of sulfur. So I thought it was about time we started getting rid of bases around me. I started turning my sulfur into gunpowder, but for the explosives, I needed more low grade. 
luckily I had a lot of diesel from my dome runs and so I could just turn that into low grade at the pump jack. Okay, let's go over to water treatment. Whoa. What the hell? Where is this guy? Don't ever shoot at me again. Someone just stole my low grade. I just heard someone. I fucking knew it. I thought it was going crazy. I started hearing footsteps. <laughs> Don't dare take my low grade. We have acquired low grade. Now with the low grade, I crafted up a few rockets and then it was time to raid. Yeah, that one's good. That should be most of the turrets. Oh. Oh my. Wait, can I? Can I drain that? Bro, I feel like I'm back in old school Ross draining turrets. That was sick. Grab the rocket. And it's time to raid. Fucking. Let's go. What a fucking entrance. Building up to a raid with a parachute just fucking hits different. Here we are. And the raid was pretty damn good. Let's go. Actually not a bad raid. A really good raid. I sealed the base and I moved everything from the raid back to my base. The Russians were now gone forever. I hadn't seen a lot of them this wipe, but it was still pretty nice to get rid of them since I would now have this entire mountain for myself. After this, for a while nothing really happened, uh, I just ran around the server not really doing anything. Thank you. Then it was time to start the expansion of the sky base. And with the first expansion, we added a farm base to the sky base. And after building the main sky base, building a smaller one was pretty easy. Then I just opened up the bridge leading to the farm base, and with that, our first expansion was complete. Okay, our first bridge and tower is complete. Now here, it's time. To start farming. But making a farm base in the sky is easier said than done. Since I didn't have a water source, I would have to create my own with water catchers. Which in all honesty make your farm suck when it comes to productivity. But using water catchers was all I could do, so... After this I had to wait for the water and so I had some time to kill. And so I grabbed a bolt and headed out to have a bit of fun. Let's grab the, grab the AKs. Bro, I needed these AKs. After some fun, I did some quick farming for upkeep, and then the plan was to just get some sleep. What is happening here? This is not what I wanted to wake up to. <sighs> but like most nights for me this wipe, sleeping was just not an option. My SAM site is being destroyed. The... It's not good. They were trying to destroy my SAM sites. And even though I managed to save one SAM site, one SAM site is not enough to keep me completely secure from MLRS. God. And so I grabbed all my components and scrap and I quickly recycled and bought two more SAM sites. But as I was heading home, the second strike hit. Fucking hell. Just as I went to get the SAM site, of course. I would have to work quickly and get up these two SAM sites, since my base most likely wouldn't be able to handle another strike. Where did they... Did they just die? Oh, our base is fucked. Fucking hell. I managed to quickly get rid of the players on my base and then I just tried to fix up the base the best I could. Oh, base is fucked. 
and when they came back I was ready for them. <laughs> Get fucked. Ooh. I'll take those MLRS. I hope stealing these MLRS would be the end of this. But no, they were not done yet. Uh, brother! Fucking hell! Let me breathe! And for a whole hour we were just going back and forth with them trying to break my SAM side and me trying my absolute best to stop them. Oh. Easy save. And I actually managed to keep one alive, but as you know, one Sam site does not mean you're safe from MLRS. Well, how many MLRS do they have? Jesus! Get the fuck back. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing, honestly. Oh, not again, man. I mean... What can I do? I can't defend or anything. Uh, the base is fucking gone. Like, half is just gone. With half my base completely gone, I managed to get some contact with the raiders using global chat. And it seemed like they had realized who I was through my Steam profile. Yeah, big mistake on my part. But this gave me a rare opportunity that only a YouTuber could get. And while I'm usually against using such methods, I hate to say it, but I was desperate. I needed this attack to stop, or this base wouldn't be standing for much longer. And through some negotiating, I managed to get them to stand down. And all I had to give back in return was their M2 and L9. Uh, L9 is on the mini. A small price to pay. But I kept talking to them, and after a lot more talking, I even managed to get an invite to their team. Now don't worry. I had no plans on letting this slide and becoming friends with them. I hated this whole situation. The hopelessness and the defeat I felt as my base was crumbling before my eyes was just horrible and something my ego just doesn't like feeling. And all I wanted now was revenge. And well, after being invited to their team, this shouldn't be too hard. I would play the part, gain their trust, become friends, and then give them back the same thing they did to me. Only there wouldn't be a base left for them when I was done. Let the manipulation commence. And it started off great, I continued talking with them and they even gave me some teas and jackhammers to help me rebuild. Oh, fuck MLRS. Holy fuck. Well boys, we have a lot of repairing to do. Let's just say that. I do like that the only part that is left on the base is the, is the stuff with actual loot. Like no loot actually fell down even though over half the base is gone. Yeah, I hadn't lost a single loot room during the raid. You see, I knew when building the base that if I got MLRS, the side would be the first to be destroyed. And so all my loot and TC was kept on the opposite side, meaning that it would be safe even though half my base had been destroyed. Anyways, I had to rebuild half of my base, and so I got to work. We're gonna need so much stone. But down on my last knee, people tried to use this opportunity to try and take me down. What the hell is happening? Oh. Bro, get the fuck out of my base. I've just been raided, fuck In off. my carelessness, I had left a few doors open and some people tried to use this to raid me. Luckily, I came back just in time. I did some more farming and then I could finally fix up the base. Oh, it's done. I've just built this base twice now, this wipe. Uh, I wanna fucking die. <laughs> then after grinding for the entire night, it was now 9 in the morning for me. And I could finally get some sleep. Good night, I'm never logging into Rust again. 
When waking up I still had some repairs to do on the base and so first I did a massive tunnel run. This is probably the most components I've ever gotten from a tunnel run. I bought some new sand sites and I decided to move them down to the compound instead of the tower to make it harder for people to shoot out from a distance. I rebuilt the electrical system and I could also finally start using the farm base. But as I was doing this, a scrap heli was quickly heading towards my base. What the? What's happening? Oh! Free arrow? Oh! <laughs> oh my! Bro, the sulfur! Oh my god! Bro, the f fuck the clothes! Give me the sulfur! What the fuck? So much sulfur! <laughs> yeah, so this group had just made a big sulfur run using the excavator. And as they were heading home, they were unlucky enough to fly past my base, losing all of their sulfur to me in the process. Oh, they're pissed. This was big and would speed up my plans a lot. You see, I have a plan. And then two backup plans just in case. Plan number one, shoot MLRS at their base until nothing is left. They can't do anything, I just have to sit by and watch. This one is the ideal plan. Plan number two, if I can't get enough MLRS for plan one, first shoot all the MLRS I managed to collect, then finish up the base with rockets. This would give them a small chance of fighting back, which is not what I want since I want them to be utterly defeated while being able to do nothing about it, just like when they raided me. And lastly, plan number three. I don't get nearly enough MLRS to even deal some damage to the base, and instead I have to rely mostly on rockets. This plan also includes inviting some experienced Rust players to help out, since most of all I don't want to make this a fair fight. But if I have to choose between getting my revenge solo or with a group, solo would of course be my choice. And so plan 1 or 2 is what I'm aiming for, and plan 3 is really just a last resort. Besides, as long as nothing goes terribly wrong, everything should be fine, and I should have a ton of MLRS. Anyway, it was time to build the last tower on the base, and finally finish the sky base. You know, the thing that I was actually supposed to be doing this wipe, building a sky base. This tower would be my shop. Yeah, I know, spending all of these resources just for a shop is unnecessary, but the base just looked so much cooler with this. And also, this tower faces the military base, and so now if someone fires MLRS at my base, this tower would take the brunt of the attack, protecting the main sky base. After this, Demon came over to my base. Yo. These small, insignificant talks were huge in building up my trust with their group. And I tried having as many of these as possible. I had a lot of sulfur at this point, from the scrap heli incident earlier and also just from farming while out farming for upkeep. And so I also created a second furnace system, this time one that would also create charcoal for gunpowder. I can't be asked to show you exactly how to build this, but this here is something similar you can use. And after a few hours of letting the sulfur cook up, I made it into gunpowder and then crafted up rockets. Oh, we're starting to get somewhere, this is starting to look good. And at this point I had quite a lot of MLRS just from running launch site, but I wanted a lot more. And so I used some of my rockets to raid bases close to launch site to see if they had any MLRS. Yeah, let's see. We got some MLRS in here. That's nice. Not a bad thing. Pretty decent. Now we just keep going. Eh, not that good. Huh? Some gunpowder. Wasn't that many rockets, so it's okay. I then took a few Bradleys. Boom! Not a bad Bradley. We take those. And I even managed to get help from the people I was going to use the MLRS on when taking it. These guys are helping me get MLRS. And uh, they don't know that I'm gonna use it on them. <laughs> and lastly, I ran launch site a few more times. And to get more sulfur, I finally opened up my shop, selling everything from guns to workbenches. Here we go, that should start bringing in sulfur. Bro, I don't think I've ever had this many components. Massive recycled run. 
Oh, bro, look at the scrap just from running low on shite. Bro, this is so much scrap. <laughs> Everything was going great. Except I was starting to get tired of farming 127,000 stone for upkeep every day. Luckily, my farm base was about to pay off big time. Bro, so many berries. And so I crafted all of these berries into teas, which would be more than enough for the rest of the while. Holy teas. And I even started selling them in the shop for sulfur. The day of revenge was growing closer every day, as I just continued the collection of MLRS like a well-oiled machine. I also took some time and ran the oil rig and cargo ship to get all the aiming modules I would need. As two. Also earlier in the conversation, I learned that these guys own the sulfur quarry, and so I managed to get access to it. And so I used that to get some more sulfur for a few more rockets. Yeah, I think this is more than enough sulfur. But as I was heading home from Sulfur Quarry, something was happening at my base. Wait, what the hell? Oh no. Fuck. Yes, now that I was finally ready to take my revenge, a raid base had popped up outside my base. And well, I was about to be raided. You have to be kidding me. The raid hadn't started yet, and so I tried my best to slow them down and just drain meds from them. Fucking okay, hell. Bro, defending from sky base. This is gonna be hard. They started pushing up, and it was clear they weren't gonna make this a fair Holy raid. beam! As they immediately started destroying the SAM site, hinting that they would probably just raid with MLRS. Oh no. Not the SAM site. I tried my best to defend the SAM sites, and I actually managed to hold them off from destroying the SAM sites for quite a while. But they just kept coming back, and after 20 minutes of fighting over the SAM sites, one by one, they started getting destroyed. And after this, I was pretty sure I knew what was coming. I have a feeling that a phone device is coming, so I'm just gonna keep everything down here. <sighs> I had to replay Sam sites this morning too, otherwise I would have had spares, but of course now I don't. Here it fucking comes. And lo and behold, they started sending volley after volley with MLRS, not leaving me much of a chance to try and win this. Well, let's just hope they don't have many MLRS. Oh, volley number two. Thank you very much, thank you, thank you, thank you, yeah. This is fun. This is very fun. I'm having so much fun defending my base. I don't know about you, but MLRS is great. Then they started rocketing, but having half a base made this pretty hard to defend. What the fuck is he doing here? I come from uh, uh, that's and that's the GG yeah it was pretty much over at this point or was it let me take you back eight hours when Kuman asked me to help him with a raid he was going to provide all the boom and all he needed was me to help now, I saw this as a great opportunity to fuck with them, and I completely threw this ring for Bull Team Slaughter. <laughs> but at this point, I actually started to feel kind of bad. You see, so far in this video, this group that I'm supposed to take revenge on looks like real dicks who grieved me and then only stopped because they realized that I was a YouTuber. And while this is still all true, maybe just looking at it like that is a bit too simple. You see, I'm the editor of this story, and I chose to portray these guys in the worst possible way. But after spending many days talking and hanging out with them, I realized that they were actually really nice people. Yeah, I know, they destroyed my base and I'm pretty sure the only reason they stopped and we became friendly is because am I okay? But there's a lot of the story that I left out. 
First of all, after the raid, they gave me the jackhammers and the teas that I already told you about. But that's really just the tip of the iceberg. When I said I needed gears for garage doors, they gave me a whole stack. When I told them how much the upkeep for my base was, they started supplying me with stone every day to help out. Anytime I was in trouble, they came running, and I think they apologized about a hundred times. And what did I do? Well, I was pretending to be their friend, while at the same time taking every little opportunity I could to fuck them over. Yeah, this wasn't a one-time thing. Every time we did something, I tried my best to throw it without making it obvious. And if this raid on me didn't happen, I was actually going to go through with my revenge plan. But somehow with all this, the Rust Gods worked their magic and they managed to show me the right path forward. You see, the same people that I'd thrown the raid against were the same people that now raided me, taking everything. Yes, karma at its finest, I know. But something you might have noticed if you watched a lot of my videos is that these names might seem familiar. See, this group is actually one of my least favorite groups in Rust. And I've run into them in a lot of my videos, especially the videos where I would get griefed a lot. Yeah, I don't like these guys. But this now left me in a pretty interesting situation. You see, accidentally, I had made a pretty strong ally. And so when they started to log on, I told them exactly what had happened. And since I'd managed to build such a good friendship with them, they immediately asked if I wanted their help for revenge, which I of course said yes to, now feeling even more terrible about my earlier plans. And so they gave me a bag in their base, and he showed me what we would be working with. Oh my god! Bro, what the fuck? Bro, these guys... Oh, they go to Boom! Yeah, I think this will do. First I spawned at my base, and the raiders had yet to leave. Oh yeah, they're, they're still here. They're still at my base. <laughs> oh. And so first thing I wanted to do was try and take back my loot. First we made sure they couldn't leave the raid base. Get ready! Oh no no no, it's solo, 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 solo! I think that... Oh my god! Good one. And after about 20 minutes of just killing them, draining them of kits and meds, it was time to get in there. We're upgrading the base. But as we were doing this, they started despawning the loot. Oh, they're despawning C4. And also to end it off, they started sealing themselves yeah. in. I'm not reading it with it. And the frame is too far out the window. <laughs> I actually had to finish my box again. And so there wasn't much of a reason to keep blowing this. Yeah, that's fine. Dead. We stayed for a bit longer to make sure they couldn't leave. Oh, he's fucking so dead! And then it was time for their main base. It was a cave base with a base above ground too. And so first, just like they had done to me, we sent over a bunch of MLRS rockets to destroy the base above. Hit. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, that's hitting. That's hitting for sure. Bro, it's so satisfying you seeing the MLRS fly. Go again. Then, after that, there was time for the cave base. But, like the absolute pussies they are, they had started despawning all the loot there too. Oh, they're despawning. And so in the end, I never actually managed to get any sort of revenge this wipe. 
but to be honest, I was actually kind of okay with that. Some crazy twists and turns had brought me here and I had had one hell of a wipe. And in the end, I can at least feel good enough knowing that they saw me as a big enough threat to where they felt they needed to despawn all their loot, which really I take as a big compliment. I said goodbye to my friends, and yeah. I call it quits right, for this wipe, yeah, right. seeing how my sky base no longer existed. Thanks again to War Thunder for sponsoring this video. And just a reminder that you can claim your exclusive bonus pack full of stuff by clicking the link down in the description. Trust me, it will be worth it. If you enjoyed this video, make sure that you check out this video, where I spent $5,000 on the first ever nuke in Rust. Or this one, where I survived solo on an island for 100 days.